like that. He will in the, in the double <laughs> retraction episode. Retraction. Right. Retra- retract septum. There's two things I really wanted to talk about this evening. Um, okay. There's the theory about the guy in the cloak in yes. the Rogue One trailer, and there's the content of Ray's vision in The Force yes. Awakens. Yes. There's a couple of other things that I need to talk about that tie into those. So what should okay. we do? Should we do those bits now and then circle back to some of these news points if we get the time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, does that sound good? Yep. Yeah, sounds awesome. Okay, so I cooked up a little theory this yes. week about yes. um, the character we see in the trailer for Rogue One mm-hmm. who walks into that darkened room with the two um, Royal Guard. Yes. And I'm going to tear through this so as not to t- burn up too much time on it and then get your guys' input on it. Um, I suspect that that character we're seeing is a Sith uh, Inquisitor. Okay. Now, it's a concept that's been introduced in Rebels, yep. which are Force wielders or, or Force mm-hmm. sensitive lightsaber wielding yes. non Sith, non Jedi, kind of like. Um, Asajj Ventress. Yes. Um, now, that's, that image that we saw, mm-hmm. which I'm currently not looking at, but we saw like a back to tank on a little plinth, looked like a little oh. stage. Yes. And then a couple of Royal Guard, left yes. and right. And then we see this yeah. character enter the room, cloaked, and, and then kneeling and down. drop into like a kneel position. Um, yeah. I suspect that's the Inquisitor. Okay. Anakin is out of the armor and in that back to tank trying to heal himself, which is okay. why he's got why he's flanked by royal guards. Yeah, it's a good idea. I like that. He's vulnerable, and I've the one person the one person he needs to be protected from is the ambitious apprentice. Yeah, and uh, I suspect that that is Mads Mikkelsen's character, even okay. though it's being strongly rumored at the moment that he plays an engineer that designed the Death Star. And yeah. he may or may not be Jin's father. Um, mm. There's a lot. I, I do cover it in the article I put up on the site on Monday. But yes. th- there's a lot to suggest that Jin, having been on her own from 15, may be an orphan and not that not be her father. And even if it yeah. is, why would she be motivated to go after him after all those years? I don't know. Yeah, that there, would fit thematically as well. I mean, a lot. You know, you see a lot of times people get kind of drawn into groups in films having previously been orphans and you know they kind of find a sense of belonging in a new social in a new group well it's with happened a, in kind of, both with a purpose in all the trilogies so in, in all the star wars yeah. trilogies so far isn't it even yeah. though we're only one film into this one it's very much a star wars kind of it's you know theme. tropes that tropes the wrong words but yeah run a, a kind of a common theme a common yeah. thread that kind of binds them all no. Uh, together is is one of these kind of you know somebody who's previously had no direction being given a purpose by joining up with some kind of similar charactered individuals yeah now with regard to Mads Mikkelsen playing this role yeah he some time ago when he was first attached to a project he started signing autographs as Galen mm-hmm. yes he'd sign posters and things as Galen and mm-hmm. uh, that indicates to me the character in the expanded universe in the Force Unleashed games. Yes. Called Galen. Galen Starkiller. Yeah. His actual name is Galen Marrick. And he went That's by right, the yes. name of Starkiller. That's um, right. Sorry, yes, you're right. He was um, portrayed by Sam Whitmer in the games and yes. he was Vader's apprentice essentially. Mm-hmm. He, Steve, that's the game where the guy's pulling the Star Destroyer down. Yes, the, down. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good game. So I think this figure we're seeing in this image might be Mads Mikkelsen playing a retcon version of the Galen Marrick character. And Do you know, I, as unlikely as it feels, because I think they're, the video games tend to be stuff they don't tend to bring back into proper canon, uh, with exceptions. Because, I mean, they brought Carl Catan in from the video games and they brought in, obviously, all the sort of Sith Lords and stuff from Knights of the Old Republic, but I really like this thing. <laughs> I yeah. have to say. I've, re- I've reread the article while we've been talking uh, because I did read it when it first went up and I've since, it's all kind of gone straight out with one, the other side because I've got a shocking yeah. memory at the moment. <laughs> so um, I had another read of it and um, the more, the, I'll tell you what, I love it. I yeah. really like this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 
Sounds pretty really neat, do. Because right? if you yeah, think that about it lovely. in terms of the importance, there is a need for a character like that yeah. in this movie because mm. the good guys need someone to defeat yeah. and we can't have Vader punked two films in a row. So no, it's true. Vader needs to be failed by one of his own and yeah. Galen needs to die at the hands of the rebels. Yeah. Um, but Vader can't have a failure here and then go into episode four and have another failure because it starts to undermine that the, He's like the worst temp in the world, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not just work Saturdays. And it also sows a nice seed that Galen would be proto-Luke for Vader. If Vader's trying yeah. to... If he's using that back to tank to try and get Anakin back to full strength, yeah, Galen might be an opportunity for him to challenge the Emperor for dominance yeah. and become the Sith Master and then mm-hmm. fully indoctrinate Galen as his Sith Apprentice. Yeah, I, I, that bit of the theory... I kind of, I don't see it. I don't know. I don't know maybe it's, it's it's possible, but I just that one I see less likely to happen. Well, it happens um, in Empire. That, what's that? Sorry. That i will trying to. Yes, of course he does. Vader yes, you're deciding right. he's going to challenge Palpatine. Yeah, that's true. That happens in Empire because that's what yes. the that's what the bun fight is over Luke, and as soon as Luke's yes. on the table, both of them mm. are calling each other on their lies. Yeah. So it happens there. So it wouldn't surprise me if Vader had designs on that sort of move early on. Maybe. And he saw an Inquisitor yeah, well as, the way to, as the way to do it. Yeah. Now, here's a question I have for you then, based on that theory. So if we assume that your theory is completely, completely airtight and concrete, what then for Ben Mendelssohn's character? Well, you've always got that um, that politician in there, yeah. as well as... like. It would be the Tarkin Vader um, yeah. style okay. of thing, wouldn't it? So you'd have Ben Mendelssohn and yeah. Galen. Yeah. And I'm not quite sure. I haven't really formed a solid idea of what Mendelssohn's role is going to be. be. It's grand. He does admiral. seem very hands. Yeah, he does seem very hands on, doesn't he? Yeah. But I don't really know. I mean, I've heard sort of talks that he'll be from a different branch of the. Empire, ISB or whatever it is, yeah. Compared to what, um, yeah, like Tarkin would be more of a politico, yeah. And he will be more of a, um, more of the military arm, yeah. But I'm not. It could I'm be. Not really I mean, sure on what that on what his role is going to be to the story. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at the image of um, of the back to tank. What we what we're assuming is the back to tank, and I think there's every reason to surmise that it is. Because it does look, it's got it's got the shape of the the classic Empire one. Um, I would be very interested to see if this ter- if it turns out to be to contain Vader at that precise moment, and they've gone to sort of report into him. Is that the only time we're going to see him in the film, or indeed even the first time? Well, Vader, because it could, yeah, it could be that we see him in a big battle, and this is you know post battle, or this might be prepping for a big battle. What he expects to be a big fight, yeah. It's well, be interesting to see. What I'm hearing is that we'll see a lot of a very aggressive Vader on the battlefield. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is what I'm hearing at the moment. And I'm yeah. hearing that it's quite a significant role for the character. But right. um, there is something that... Are you familiar with Shadows of the Empire? There's a That was a, that tie-in story. It was yeah. a book and a video game. Steve, you remember that? Game and a comic book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It, in there, there was a there was a part of that, I'm pretty sure it's that story because I didn't read much in a way of the Expanded Universe stuff, but right. there was something in that story which was about Anakin using the Force to repair himself. And this is right. before Episode 3, so we didn't really know the full extent of what had happened to him. But he yeah. was using the Force to repair himself. And right. he was thinking about Obi-Wan whilst he was doing it, so he got so enraged. And I, yeah. I, I absolutely love this. He got so enraged that it made him so strong on the dark side that he started to repair himself. Yeah. He could, his lungs started to get better and his skin started to heal. And then the joy yeah. he felt from his success made the dark side go away, so it all undid itself. And he was caught in that horrible, yeah, Dan, almost like that Dante-like circle of... What, mm-hmm. did his uh, injuries come back? His injuries immediately came back because he lost the power that he was using in the dark side because he felt joy. So it was... Yeah. Uh, and I, I love the idea. I don't know, that yeah. This, I can't remember that. When, it may be in there. 
I think it was that. I think it was in that story. Mm. Someone will tell us. Um, I'm sure. But I love the idea that that might be the Anakin that we see in Rogue One. Because I yeah. don't just want to see Vader. I want to see... Mm. I, I, I like the idea of Hayden Christensen coming back and earning back his yeah. stripes, you know? Because mm-hmm. he's been given such a rough trot after Revenge of the Sith. He really, ha- he really has. And he's because a good actually, actor. He doesn't deserve that yeah. sort of feedback. No. So Agreed. I loved him in Jumper. Oh, it's brilliant. I haven't seen Jumper. I like Jumper. It's a, it's junk food, but it's good junk mm. food, you know. Yeah, I mean, I've you know, I'm a big Taken fan. It's not like that's got any particularly massive cinematic genius behind the plot. It's just a it's it a switch your brain off and enjoy. It does what it needs to do, doesn't it? Yeah, he's, and it's John ten Wick times the same. than Taken two and three put together. Oh yes, no argument there. <laughs> no, I would like to see Hayden come back, and even if it's just in this, even if it's just an extended cameo. As mm. Anakin, and we can see that yeah. he's trying to, he's trying to pull himself back. He's trying to get Anakin back. Yeah. Uh, but obviously, he'll still want to use the dark side because he's never going to get rid of that. He'll want to be Anakin, sure. but a powerful yeah. Sith Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, I this one little shot, I think, says all of that to me. But it might be. What I, I I'll go with it. More than anything else. Yeah, I'd, I'd happily go with it. And if it turned out to be true, it'd be bloody amazing, wouldn't it? Yeah. Oh, well, Absolutely. We've scored. Uh, we keep shooting so much. We've scored a few in the past, and who knows, this might be one of them. <laughs> yep. If right. you spray bullets, eventually you hit something. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Hopefully I'm right here. There's there's a lot to be taken from that shot, but I, I think that all of that stuff pretty much holds up, but we'll see. Yeah, I mean, the the way to look at it is, if even if we're proved completely 100% wrong, we'll still get a Star Wars movie out of it. Oh, yeah, Christ, yeah. There, there, there are no loser here. Exactly. Steve, did you have anything you wanted to say about that that image? No, I mean it's it's so ambiguous. I think it could be anything. I mean, it, it you know it could even be Kylo, couldn't it? It would you be. Know? Bit, uh, it, I know yeah, what you mean. It's like it look. It's got the look of it. I mean, I think timeline wise, it's all it's obviously not, all wrong. It can't but... be Kylo Ren. It could be a Knight of Ren, but it wouldn't Maybe. be Kylo Ren because well, couldn't it be, be Ren? Kylo? Because this is um, before episode before four. Episode four. Oh, so sorry. Of course, like we're talking about Rogue. Yeah. Of course it is. I got my timeline ruined then. Oh, you're thinking of episode eight, weren't you? Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, were, okay. you were just talking about that. Yeah. No. Yeah. Oh, I see what you mean. Sorry to put yeah. a bit of a robot chicken on this, robot chicken spin on this whole theory, right? But if you right. look at that image now, right? Yeah. Over, yeah. Um, <laughs> that could be a hot tub. <laughs> the Emperor could be in that hot tub, and Vader could right. be coming in. With like a takeaway or something, yeah. And he's just sitting be. there with like. Well, they got to eat. Couple just, of uh, this, this like it could be one of those ones like the uh, where they got the emperor on the end of the phone, and it's like, yeah. oh my god, he's cry- he's crying. Yeah, <laughs> and I think if this character in the hood just moves a couple of steps to the left, you'll see Vader. You'll see it, Palpatine with his hood still up and he's each arm around a Twi'lek, just inside yeah. that hot tub. Vader, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one I like yeah. that theory better right yeah I like that too I'll go with either to be honest maybe that's for the sort of special edition Blu-ray that's it yeah that's it maybe they use branching <laughs> technology to give us an option we can choose which scene we want yeah hot, t- hot tub Palpatine <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a, a three qu- it's a third it's a second sequel to the, uh, the John Cusack movie it's definitely the most evocative picture isn't it that one yeah it yes, really is yeah. very much so Huge amounts of uh, speculation possible. And the one, person, the one person he needs to be protected from is the ambitious apprentice. Yeah. And uh, I suspect that that is Mads Mikkelsen's character, even okay. though it's being strongly rumoured at the moment that he plays an engineer that designed the Death Star, and yeah. he may or may not be Jin's father. Um, mm. There's a lot... I, I do cover it in the article I'll put up on the site on Monday, but yes. th- there's a lot to suggest that Jin, having been on her own from 15... 
may be an orphan and not that not be her father. And even if it yeah. is, why would she be motivated to go after him after all those years? I don't know. Yeah. That they, would fit thematically as well. I mean, a lot, you know, you see a lot of times people get kind of drawn into groups in films having previously been orphans and, you know, they kind of find a sense of belonging in a new social, in a new group well, it's with, a, in both, of, with a purpose. In all the trilogies, so in, in all Absolutely, the Star Wars trilogies yeah. so far, isn't it? Even yeah. though we're only one film into this one. It's very much a Star Wars kind of, it's you know, theme. tropes that tropes. To, to burn up too much time on it and then get your guys input on it. Um, I suspect that that character we're seeing is a Sith uh, Inquisitor. Okay. Now, it's a concept that's been introduced in Rebels. Yep. Which are force wielders or, or force mm-hmm. sensitive lightsaber wielding yes. non Sith, non Jedi, kind of like um, Asajj Ventress. Yes. Um, now, that's that image that we saw. Mm-hmm. which I'm currently not looking at, but we saw like a back to tank on a little plinth, looked like a little oh. stage. Yes. And then a couple of Royal Guard, left yes. and right. And then we see this yeah. character enter the room, cloaked, and, and then kneeling and down. drop into like a kneel position. Um, yeah. I suspect that's the Inquisitor. Okay. Anakin is out of the armour and in that back to tank trying to heal himself, which is okay. why, he's got, why he's flanked by Royal Guards. It's yeah. a good idea. He's I like that. Vulnerable. Probably the wrong word, but yeah, run, uh, a kind of a common theme, a common yeah. thread that kind of binds them all no. uh, together is is one of these kind of you know somebody who's previously had no direction being given a purpose by joining up with some kind of similar charactered individuals. Yeah. Now, with regard to Mads Mikkelsen playing this role, yeah, he some time ago when he was first attached to a project, he started signing. Autographs as Galen. Mm-hmm. Yes, he'd signed posters and things as Galen, and mm-hmm. uh, that indicates to me the character in the expanded universe in the Force Unleashed games. Yes, called Galen, Galen Starkiller. Yeah, his actual name is Galen Marrick, and he went That's by right, the yes. name of Starkiller. That's uh, right. Sorry, yes, you're right. He was um, portrayed by Sam Witwer in the games, and yes, he was. Vader's apprentice, essentially. Mm-hmm. He, Steve, that's the game where the guy's pulling the Star Destroyer down. Yes, the, down. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good game. So I think this figure we're seeing in this image might be Mads Mikkelsen playing a retconned version of the Galen Marrick character. And Do you know, I, as unlikely as it feels, because I think they're, the video games tend to be stuff they don't tend to bring back into proper canon, uh, with exceptions... Because, I mean, they brought Carl Catan in from the video games and they brought in, obviously, all the sort of Sith Lords and stuff from Knights of the Old Republic. But I really like this thing, <laughs> yeah. I have to say. I've, re- I've reread the article while we've been talking because uh, I did read it when it first went up and I've since it's all kind of gone straight out with one, the other side because I've got a shocking yeah. memory at the moment. <laughs> so um, I had another read of it and um, the more, the, I'll tell you what, I love it. I yeah. really like this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Sounds pretty really neat. Because right? if you yeah, think like, about it lovely. in terms of the importance, there is a need for a character like that yeah. in this movie because mm-hmm. the good... <laughs> in the double retraction episode. The retraction. Right. Retra- retract there's, them. there's two things I really wanted to talk about this evening. Um, okay. There's... The theory about the guy in the cloak in yes. the Rogue One trailer, and there's the content of Ray's vision in The Force yes. Awakens. Yes. There's a couple of other things that I need to talk about that tie into those. So what should okay. we do? Should we do those bits now and then circle back to some of these news points if we get the time? Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, does that sound good? Yep. Yep, sounds awesome. Okay, so I cooked up a little theory this yes. week about yes. um, the character we see in the trailer for Rogue One mm-hmm. who walks into that darkened room with the two um, Royal Guard. Yes. And I'm going to tear through this so there's 